position of agnosticism. Correct me if I'm m making a straw man. I want you to. St sure. It's better if you steel man the position, right? So I believe that position generally leads to uncertainties about morality, value, purpose of life, and general existential questions are not addressed in a fulfilling way. I believe that that worldview, um, pragmatically and empirically, is not satisfying. I think the great, the, the thing is being uncertain is uh, not something people, it's, it's, a, it's a warring position to take. It's, uh, it's, it seems terrifying initially, but reason has guided, uh, reason has simply guided me into this realm of uncertainty. And I, I think that you can almost deify your rational faculties and you can find solace and hope that through reason and uh, you can you, you you can be guided and of course reason can be used and exploited to uh, perpetrate the most awful things that humanity have uh, and you know enacted on one another but this it's not but it doesn't affect morality it doesn't reflect beauty it's it's purely a, a, a rational understanding okay the thing is Again, when it comes to rationality, I don't think rationality and the value of rationality and the fruits of rationality, which we get through science and philosophy and general um, education, these things can be understood from an agnostic point of view. I don't think agnos an agnostic or an atheistic position can justify us trusting our rational cognitive faculties. That's a very good question. Because I'm saying I've almost, I, I almost deify, if you ask what my deity is, it's my reason. And it's, and it's a tool that's blunt. It's, it was, in my mind, it was developed to hunt an antelope across the Great Plains of the Serengeti, not debate with you. So the, it's a tool that is ultimately um, not equipped for, uh, for what I really want to use it for, uh, understanding the ultimate truths of humanity. But it's the best we've got, and um, and and you're saying that ultimately it can't be trusted because reason cannot justify reason. I can't take an objective step back and look at my rational process and think, God, is this wrong or right? Because I can't escape it, obviously. Yeah. But and you're, uh, uh, but I don't think our rational abilities um, have been endowed uh, into our minds by a, 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 a by a divine authority. That's why I, I believe. I, I'm saying it was designed to help us survive in the natural world and we should trust it because we're all still here so it must work to some degree it must have, oh, and although you see all of these different uh, rational structures arguing against one another I think that at, at their core we do ultimately agree that our perceptions vaguely do have a blueprint on the reality our reason is vaguely accurate not a hundred percent but it is and I, I, I think we and it's derived from in my mind evolution and the ability to survive yeah survive. yeah and just to clarify i'm not saying our reason is not trustworthy i'm saying we both agree our reason is trustworthy and our reason is a good tool the question is what better explains those faculties that cognitive architecture we have a theistic worldview or an atheistic worldview can i can i begin off with a uh, the story of Alfred Russell Wallace, okay. right? So, can excuse me, we're having a excuse me. We're finding it hard to have a conversation with him. This is the difference between sophistry and philosophy. Can you philosophy, move? you have one concept, you try and chip away and move through dialogue to define it. That's just uh, asserting your ideas. Yeah, it is. It is. But, uh, yeah, so I I'll, I'll give you the example of, of <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to continue. We'll have to. We'll have, it's fine. It's fine. Fine. Sure. fine. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's alright. It's speaker's corner. Um, so freedom of expression. Freedom of expression, indeed. Yes. So with Alfred Russell Wallace, he was the co-founder of the theory of natural selection. Natural selection explaining biodiversity and um, you know these changes which are heritable and then passed on during generations. So what's interesting. Darwin and Wallace, they both came to the conclusion around the same time about natural selection's efficacy. However, they didn't know about each other. Then they got to meet each other and Darwin and Wallace, they both put forward the theory of natural selection. So in the Victorian times, it wasn't known as, Dar it wasn't known as Darwin's theory. It was known as Darwin and Wallace's theory. 
Now, what's interesting is Wallace fell off the bandwagon because of the issue that we're discussing. Wallace realized that if you take uh, natives from Latin America, you bring them to London, you allow them to flourish in this environment, they are just as intelligent as their European counterparts. So he realized that selective pressures, which were there to enhance survival and reproduction, they should not create a situation where you have this surplus cognitive capacity. And that surplus cognitive capacity, he believed could not be explained by natural selection. So Wallace, he essentially parted ways with Darwin when it came to human beings and our cognitive faculties and what we can do. So what we've been discussing so far is our very cognitive faculties. So the discussions we're having about whether theism or atheism can better explain this cognitive architecture, this goes back to Wallace and Darwin's discussions because the, the, the reality is it's not just a theoretical idea. Empirically, there's evidence to show our cognitive faculties are way more advanced than what natural selection would develop them to be. No, I'm not. I'm not a biologist, but I can You can imagine uh, we uh, we we can outrun any other mammal apart from huskies. We can run for extremely long distances, and you can imagine uh, we all we all from Africa. Our ancestors would be hunting um, these great uh, hordes of uh, you know antelope or whatever across dis large distances, and we would have to communicate and develop. Tools, and I think that the idea that we have a surplus amount of reason is, uh, is ultimately, um, it, I think it, it's because ultimately what I want to understand is how your mechanical, your tools of reason uh, led you to the conclusion that uh, a, a the, the position of a theist is uh, of greater rational merit than the position of atheism or even agnosticism. Sure, sure. So I would like to understand your process. And I think um, I, I, the, the idea that uh, we have a surplus of reason, um, is a, it, I think it's, it, it, I think it's more, uh, we're, it's impressive because we're using our reason for things that it wasn't originally intended to be used for. So it was meant to be used for tools and hunting, and we're using it in a totally novel way. This is why Speaker's Corner is a great uh, establishment of uh, reason and debate. I'm very sorry. No, no, it's fine. Reason and debate, because ultimately we can. Uh, uh, examine one another's tools and see why we reach different conclusions with the same faculties. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But there's two, two things you asked me, Strobel. Yes. The first thing Strobel was about why I believe in theism rather than atheism. And the second is that we're using our, 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 our if you like, surplus capacity to come to these types of discussions and do these types of things. We, that's the first time in Speaker's Corner I've seen a football being kicked. That was a bit strange. Okay, so um, I lost my uh, train. Here we are claiming we're rational animals. I love it. Yeah. So um, when it comes to theism, um, I believe in the theistic position for a few reasons. Now, I don't want to go into the general reasons without getting into the particular reason about why I believe in God in this context about the cognitive architecture. Then I can explain to you generally why I believe in theism. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> See, that's one of the enjoyable things about Speaker's Corner. We're all, although everyone's fighting over different views, we are singing Talks harmony the about the freedom of expression. That's right. That's, we all, that's right. that's right. That's right. That's, that's right. why you're talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. So basically, um, when, it <laughs> when it comes to rationality, which we're seeing a lot of, uh, um, a, lot, a lack of use of rationality here. Speaker's Corner, that's right. So, so when it comes to this particular argument, I believe God has created us to have a rational mind and that rational mind is trustworthy not because it evolved due to natural selection but because God has actually endowed us with that. Now, because of that paradigm, the paradigm that I begin off with, I don't need to justify my rationality. By an atheistic perspective, the reason why they need to justify it is because you can, for example, if there's a person 
who stares at a cave and he sees three lions walking in. Two lions walk out and he can't do mathematics. He walks in there assuming there's no lion, he's going to get eaten, right? So therefore, natural selection would have developed these rational faculties. However, when it comes to us sitting around, having coffee, discussing quantum mechanics, that doesn't, it's not explained by natural selection. I believe that's explained by theism, okay? Now, the other point that we were speaking about, which you asked me, why do I generally believe in God? I believe the primary reason why I believe in God is because it's natural. That there's an innate disposition in us to call upon someone greater than us, and it's inbuilt within us. So, I don't know if you've ever read the Quran. You've come to the Speaker's Corner a few times? No, I haven't. I've only read the first page or two, but I would like to, I need to read it in the obviously original Arabic. Well, no, no, you can, you can read it in English. It's not a problem. I, I think this is a very important point you touched on. You're, you're saying that some deity, like an artist, has painted the rational framework that allows us to explore him and celebrate him. And ultimately, I am either misled or it is in, unnatural for me uh, not to crave belief. And I'm saying that I, it, it's not natural. Uncertainty is, I think, a, a strong and brave position. And in many ways, it isn't natural. We like to believe our perceptions are certain and, we, and our beliefs are constructed uh, in, a, in a way we can smooth them with a degree of conviction. And, and, uh, but, um, but I don't think you need a deity to, you know. So, oh, no, 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 I, I think explaining uh, bringing God into the picture on the grounds we have a surplus of reason is not necessary because we can explain reason through a, through the process of evolution. And I think it's I think that there's so many different frameworks that you're seeing around you. It's so hard to uh, to, uh, to firstly believe uh, in a specific deity and then and then and then promote that above all other. Others. And that's why I I, I'm, I, I can't um, I can't no. you know go for the um, ideology the, the religion. Yeah. I can't go so for the religious I, I would disagree with you because I would say this could be the fallacy of equivocation. When I'm speaking about rationality and when you're speaking about rationality, we're not talking about the same thing. When you're, well, I'll explain why I don't think we are, which is why we're disagreeing. When you say rationality, you're talking about rationality, which could be explained by natural selection. So our ability to um, stick to um, cost-benefit analysis about what's good for us, what's bad for us, right? Natural selection can explain that. Natural selection can explain our fitness enhancing behaviors. When I'm referring to rationality, I'm referring to the general idea that we can rationalize and a subcategory is the type of rationality that you're talking about. Do you so, see? Because yeah, when you look at uh, great eight, Gibbons can uh, use rudimentary tools. And I would say that we can see um, uh, embry uh, rationality in the natural world but just to a far lesser degree. So it critically, it's not uh, exclusively endowed in man. Rationality is shared with, by other creatures, but to a lesser extent. Yeah. And I think you can look at the, this earlier form of rationality and realize that it's, uh, we actually belong to a great path, or a, ch a chain of improvement and, and natural selection. Um, but, you know, as I say, I'm not a biologist, sure. but I, I, I don't think my reason is explained by some deity. I don't think it's necessary necessary to explain my reason sure. through I'll, ex I'll explain I'll, I'll explain holding of theology yeah so I'll explain why that is the case that reason the way we use our reason this can't be explained by natural selection now you're right ants have rationality baboons have rationality human beings have ra rationality and we share rationality with many other species however that's neither here nor there Natural selection can only explain our fitness enhancing behavior. It does not explain why we look out to the cosmos. It doesn't explain our yearning for moral achievements. It doesn't explain many facets of our reason which we use day to day. Right? I, at the beginning of this debate, we, I mentioned beauty as one of my beliefs. 
And you may say that beauty has no purpose within an evolutionary understanding. And but it does, what, though. Well, why, so why would we track across the great plains of the Serengeti and stop and admire a flower for four hours? A fucking saber-toothed tiger could come up and gnaw us to pieces. Yeah. But, and, uh, but that, this would be a major mistake. Because re beauty is is uh, a very human. It's it's it doesn't beauty can survive independently of a deity. So we can explain we can explain beauty as a form of um a form of. Um, it's a very good question, actually. Where so, does beauty come so look, from? Look, do we need a deity to so, explain it, so, or do we need? Can we explain it through evolution let, let, and reason? Let's make, let's let, let's widen out the question. Whether it's beauty, or us valuing truth for its own sake, uh -huh. not for instrumental yes. reasons. Yes. Whether it's morals, um, our thirst for knowledge, all of these uh, facets, these cannot be explained by natural selection because they don't have fitness enhancing benefits. Like you mentioned, if you're staring at a flower for a long period of time, you get eaten by saber tooth tire. That's not evolutionary very wise. However, evolutionary theories can explain uh, beauty from respect of reproduction. So you find someone beautiful and you reproduce and you can have fitness enhancing behavior that way. However, when it comes to many of our moral judgments, many of the values that we actually hold, this cannot be explained by evolutionary theories. But what values are you referring to? I mean, just look around. Let, let's, let's stick to one. Let's stick to one. Okay, so truth. Is truth valuable to you? Well, may I tell you a, a story? Uh, I, may that? I tell you a story? Sure, sure. Imagine the scene. We're trekking through the wilderness and I communicate um, to you um, uh, how we can construct a spear with a sharpened piece of flint on it and our ability to communicate, process information and then replicate other things our own species have found and build on one another's understanding is given us a key evolutionary survival benefit. And I think that the idea that a reason has gone beyond its primary function is, is, is true to some degree, but, it's, um, but it can be explained because it, 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 as our minds grew, so did our chances of life and survival. Okay. So it, it grew beyond the borders of its original intention, but this can still be explained within the evolutionary process as an extension of its primary function. Um, because as, uh, if you follow... You... I see what you're saying, but I disagree with the way that you frame the problem. The way you've uh, uh, said, Sabur, 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 Sabur. So, Strabo, the great thing, ring Sabur. yeah, this is a, um, a a stone from the mountains of Badakhshan in Afghanistan. Oh, brilliant! Like yeah. the, yes, the blue, the blue stones. A very specific blue. In yes, it. yes. What's it called? Um, uh, uh, um, I've forgotten the name. It starts with L. It has a different name in uh, Pashto and has a different name in uh, in English, but. Um, okay, so this, when a human being is staring at the beautiful blue uh, stones of Badakhshan, yes, right, yes, uh -huh. and they get um, eaten by a wolf, uh -huh. right, we would agree that's not, from an evolutionary perspective, very uh, oh, no, good for your survival, smart. right? So look, let, let's frame the problem. The way you framed it is that reason has gone beyond its original intent, the way natural selection developed it. I mean, this does not it, it ultimately, uh, yes, please. Yeah. I'm framing it in a different way. I'm saying reason, the way that we use it in our day-to-day -day lives, is far greater than the small subsection that evolutionary psychologists can explain. So the way you would frame it is, this is this small circle is what's explained by natural selection, and we're going beyond it. I'm saying it's much bigger. I'm saying, you see? I'm saying it's ultimately a tool, and it's like saying, um, if I gave you a, a, a spade, for example, and used it to dig, but you could also use it to to kill or to, I don't know, to burn as firewood if it was wooden. So I'm saying the same tool can be used for things it wasn't originally intended for. Yes, yes it can. How, however, that's very different to using your reason, not for, um, you're using the spear 
to scratch your back as opposed to kill an animal, that's very different to using your reason to think about existential questions. It's a totally different category. Well, this using the same tool for different things. It's not the same thing though, because when we are thinking about, for example, human beings, when we think about our purpose, we think about why we exist. People go through nihilistic existential crises, yes. right? What? How is that linked to you running after, um, you know, some some animal in the savanna? But it, well, I, I'm saying that exactly, it's the same tool, but it's just a, a being used. No, but that's an. Right. I see what you're saying. You're saying it's the same tool being used for another domain. Yes. I'm saying two things. I'm saying first, it's an assumption that it's this tool being used in another domain. And secondly, I'm saying you cannot explain why this tool is being used, the tool of reason in this domain. Because if you go back to, oh, sorry, one second. You know, Wallace's original problem with Darwin. Do you understand why that was a problem for him? I, from, uh, didn't Darwin publish first and Wallace had a breakdown because he didn't get his book published before Darwin? Not, not quite. What actually happened was Darwin was being, I believe, a gentleman by coming to Wallace and saying, let's publish together. So here in London, uh, the Royal Society, which is the oldest society in the world, 1858, Darwin first presented his ideas, but he was aware of Wallace's ideas. And then in 1859, he published The Origin of Species. However, Darwin, from the very beginning, he didn't just take all the credit for himself. He also gave credit to Wallace. So they were on good terms. However, Wallace later on, he started having doubts because of the example I gave earlier. So Darwin wrote him a letter and Darwin said, don't murder our child. Meaning, I've, we've come up with this theory, we're pushing it forward, now you're jumping off the bandwagon. So it wasn't jealousy, it was a conceptual difference that they have in terms of reason. So the problem I'm highlighting is, I believe Wallace's problem can be solved by theism. And I'm, I'm saying that to posit theism, uh, to explain a problem which I think can be explained through the uh, scaffolding of evolution, it's such a gigantic but there's a, leap, but, such a leap. But, but, there's, but, there's a, but there's a difference, there's a difference. The difference is, evolutionary theory, you want to use it as scaffolding to explain these problems. I'm saying, it's already been solved by theism. No, and I'm saying that you can explain it through evolution, therefore you don't have to posit. No, but... And you're taking it, you're going from the other direction, and you're saying it's been solved by theism, therefore it doesn't need to be explored through evolution. I'm saying something, two things. I'm saying not only is it conceptually explained by theism, it cannot be explained by evolutionary psychologists or evolutionary theorists. This is the impasse that we simply cannot agree on here. Because, because look, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying this out of ignorance. I, I study the topic. The, you, our evolution certainly happened. We accept that. Well, the world's been around for millions of years. I mean, okay. I, so, we, as a, even, so I mean, we accept the general idea of biological evolution. We don't deny that. What we deny is number one. This was a mindless, blind watchmaker. That this is a natural selection. Uh, we, you know, the three wheels. Uh, that you have those random mutations or random variations, you have hereditary changes being passed along. To the best of our knowledge, the universe is 13.7 and the world is four something billion years old. Right? So, yeah, we, of course, of course. So look, we, there's, there's, a few, there's a few things which I believe evolution cannot explain. Evolution cannot explain design. I believe, uh, but by, by evolution, I mean Darwinian evolution, natural selection alone. We can have an idea that God used evolution or the processes of evolution in certain contexts. There are some exceptions though. I believe human beings are a miraculous creation, right? Because God, like I'll give you an example. How is a normal child born? You know, you have the, you have the I'm not going to get into the birds and the bees and that, but we at the same time, we believe in the virgin birth, right? Let me just complete this example. We believe in the virgin birth for Jesus, we as Muslims. But at the same time, we believe that children are born from a man and a woman together. Jesus, we believe, was born of a virgin. We believe that the first man, what we say Adam, 
This man was a miraculous creation. There may have been hominids and other types of species yeah, so before that. At what point does a hominid, a fiery hominid, become divine and, mag and miraculous? Because if we don't believe that. What, uh, you must have, uh, you have to accept a, a specific generation where the, the hominid gave birth to another, to a, to a miraculous human. Yeah, I don't believe that. I, I, uh, so, so, so what, what, uh, sorry, one second. So what I believe is that the hominids existed previously, whatever, whatever they were. But Adam, what we believe in Adam, he did not come through another hominid. He was a miraculous creation. Now there's other Muslims who, you know, they, they have different opinions on this, but my, that's my belief. But, but why would you, you can see the, you can dig up bones and see how we, how we progress between a Neanderthals and a, a we, we know, we know, why, why, why say, why have all of this, um, you know, evidence of gradual change and then say suddenly there was some divine intervention and entirely new species so, so, came along. So, the, so there's two it things here, so the, there's two things here. Darwin's general idea of gradualism, even if I wasn't Muslim, and even no, even if there were no religious um, incentive to challenge uh, these perspectives, from a purely evidence point of view, gradualism is false in the fossil record. We have massive changes, like the Cambrian explosion. We have massive changes, and chapter six of Darwin's book, The Origin of Species, he talks about gradualism being a problem due to the Cambrian explosion. So look, we believe God created the world. Some species could have evolved, but when it comes to human beings, we believe it is a miraculous creation. So, and I'm just saying, why could, I, for me... You've got a, some bug in your oh, hair. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Just, just flick it off. Yeah. It's like a dead fly. Oh, right. There, <laughs> well, it's right. So, yeah. I, Where's I, his oh. tea? What I'm saying is the two hominids uh, were peering at one another from a from two separate treetops. Uh, you know, the girl gave him the eyes, they came down, and uh, over a gradual period of time, a certain group of large apes reproduced and uh, humans developed. Uh, and we've been around for about 200,000 years. Well, and the, the, and civilization started almost 7,000 years ago, and it gave us such a leisure because the food and water was in excess. Yeah. We could sit around, we could discuss this, we could use our rational faculties look, look, to pursue other things but, rather than just fighting. Yeah, so, so I think this is the process we have to, that, that, that has far more evidence uh, than, than positing a, yeah. a day. So, so, so let, let me put it another way. So, when it comes to, for example, Homo erectus over a million years. He, we, we have those skulls, right? I'm going to first explain to you the chronology. And this is again, I'm just giving you my opinion, the chronology. Human beings, we believe that human beings were a miraculous creation. What we call human, what biologists call human is Homo erectus, Homo naladi, all those things. We would say that those hominids are not part of that thing. However, I'm going to put it to you, uh, get, remind Strabo. me of it. Strabo, Strabo. This is irrelevant to believing in God. Whether somebody believes in evolution or they do not believe in evolution, they believe in Darwinism or they don't believe in Darwinism, they believe in Homo erectus being linked to us or not, is irrelevant. The fact is, theism explains design and explains our cognitive faculties, whether you believe in the miraculous creation of Adam or not. So the main thing we should stick to talking about is whether theism or atheism better explains these things. So, sorry, let me... Let, let, yeah. So let, let me just say, you said, it, yes, of course it can explain it, but then I could posit some strange beast called Moloch and I could say that reason comes from Moloch. So of course the theism does explain it. I'm just saying it's a wrong, flawed explanation. Okay, so, so, so let, let me explain yes. something. I'm not saying using using the surplus cognitive architecture is the only reason to believe in god i'm not saying that if this argument did not exist i would still believe in god because like i said to you previously strabo, strabo like i said to you previously strabo my reason for believing in god is because it's natural now once you start off with a theistic worldview pragmatically it explains our morals our purpose our values and it explains our rationality and it epistemically frees us to explain the world in a much better way than, atheist, uh, than an atheistic worldview. Because from an atheistic worldview, 
I believe not only can you not explain reason or values or morality, I, 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 I believe you can also get stuck in the problem of solipsism. Well, I, th I think I, I, I have, I have explained why reason can be, uh, why we have reason without giving a, the uh, without offering a theological explanation. And, um, but you, you agreed with me earlier that the Wallace issue, right? You acknowledge that issue is there. That re the reason. No, 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 no. Reason beyond our ability to survive and reproduce. And say, that surplus reason cannot be explained by Darwinism. And I, I'm, and I, I'm saying is that we simply have the leisure because we live in a civilized uh, community where food and water, there's a surplus. We don't have to think about constantly guessing food. Our reason can be, it can be employed to focus on other things. What, why? Because we simply have time to do all of that. That doesn't make any sense because from a, Darwin, from a, from a Darwinian point of view... I gave you an analogy of a spade to explain why... No, 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 you, you did, you did, you did. But you see, you see the arguments that you're using, you're trying to explain away a problem. But that problem is persistent. The reason why it's persistent, any okay, but okay. So there, there's a few things here. From an academic point of view, this problem exists. Whether you acknowledge it or not, academically, it does exist. The problem that we have a surplus of reason is you can, what is a surplus of reason? I don't even know what that means. No, no. If, if, okay, I'll explain to you what it means. It means okay, okay. So it, we don't have a surplus. So, so, so uh, let me. It's, let, it's gone beyond the primal, primordial purpose. No, but but let, me, let, let me define it very explicitly and clearly. What Wallace pointed out is that we use our reason. Uh, our reason developed far more than what's required for our survival and reproduction, right? That's the problem that he highlighted. Yeah. So um, there's a book. Um, there's a book which actually speaks about this problem as well. It's called Beyond Evolution. It's published by Oxford University. You can you can read that book, which also highlights this problem. So this problem is well known in academia. And next time you're here, we can discuss that in more detail. Yeah, okay, but I want you to read up on that because you're trying to brush away that problem, but that problem does exist in the in the academic literature. All I'm saying is that it's not a problem at all because it can be explained through. If it wasn't a problem, then Wallace Wallace wouldn't have jumped off the bandwagon with with what with Darwin. Of course, Wallace was uh, an Anglican, so he didn't want to uh, totally abandon the need to explain evolution through a day. He, he was agnostic, actually. Well, okay, but, he wasn't. He wasn't a Christian. But all, 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 uh, all, most Anglicans are. Uh, 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 no, he, he wasn't. He, he wasn't Christian. He was basically someone. The Church of Mer England never is, my friend. No, no, but you. He's look. So, sometimes this happens that if somebody disagrees with Darwinism, then we try and discredit them by saying they're I'm religious. Not, he wasn't religious, but even if he was, his arguments were valid. I'm not a biologist, and I'm not an authority on the precise mechanism. The mechani evolutionary mechanisms that enabled us to, uh, you know, uh, enabled us to survive and flourish and become rational animals. I can't comment on this, but what I will say. But well, you have been that, commenting on but, it. But, yes, but what I will say, yeah. But the, what I will say is that reason can does not need a deity to explain it. So give a better, okay, give a better alternative to re, to God. To God. Well, I think if you just imagine we're we're all we're all in a group, we're hunting, we need to communicate with one another, we need to make tools. Reason is essential for group uh, survival and cooperation. And I, and, and, uh, By the way, that's not Darwinism. Yes, but I'm saying... Do, do, do you know why? Darwinism is based on individual selection, not group selection. Yes, I understand this. Yeah. But I'm do you understand the difference between group just, selection and individual I selection? This, but I'm saying that we are, we've lived in groups in one form or another for millions of years. In ter uh, you, this is, you know, we weren't... Rousseau talks about the noble savage and the idea that if we didn't have... Who, talk, who talks about the noble savage? Um, uh, Rous uh, Rousseau. He Rousseau. Believes, he believes that without, without uh, civilization, Humanities would descend into a perpetual okay, state so, of anarchy. But I didn't but you know Rousseau, ever but, but, you know, but you know Rousseau was refuted by Darwinists. I, what I'm saying is that yes, exactly. No, but you're, you're, you're no, have a natural no, no, but so, so, sorry, sorry, uh, what's your name again? Strabo. Strabo. You're using in your argumentation Rousseau to buttress, okay, to buttress your point 
but he was refuted by the Darwinists who wanted to support who wanted to support Hobbes. And remember, Hobbes and Rousseau are on opposite spectrums. Faisal, come here, man. Come here. Stop running away. Come here. The way he described reason, Thomas Nagel did say the way he described reason, reason something helps survive. It wouldn't be the reason of now, it would be instinct. Exactly. So if what you're saying is true, then you shouldn't be decided to do this thing. It should be instinctual, right? So what you describe is not reason, you describe instinct. Yeah, it's instinct. That's why I need you here. No, it's instinct. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, what I will say is that we... Live why don't you read up on it and we'll come back? Okay, okay. Let's, let's end it here. Because I feel it's a bit unfair if I'm citing stuff in yellow red. No, no, I mean, all I will say And you sound is, like a very educated well, guy, you'll read it very well, happily. All I, all I will say is, and this will, my, these are my closing remarks, we live in groups, we but we could not survive as individuals cast aside in some barren at waste. We have to stick together. And um, we've used language and reason to achieve uh, group coordination. And I think that the stronger uh, the social um, bonds and interactions become, the more language developed, the more reason uh, was de was developed, and ultimately we've become to uh, we've we've reached a great state of rational understanding. But this is this is through an evolutionary sure. okay, process. Okay, so so so, so uh, is that living in a group and the yeah. necessities. Yeah. Of yeah. They never actually give evidence of evolution. They give you a story about evolution, which is why I know such a narrative as to why reason is this way and la la la. So, okay, but why, 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 why would say so? It, he's giving me a, a rational narrative. No, but, okay, well, but uh, have you, can't, have you, why do you complete your closing remarks and then I'll do mine? Okay. And you as well. well Carry on. I, I, would dis, I would say this, okay. With the, uh, the ability to communicate and explore these concepts is ultimately grounded on a desire to, um, uh, to articulate the internal landscape of our mind and explain it to other people around us. And this requires reason and thought and intention. And but this process of communicating ideas to other people. Okay, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. The idea of communicating ideas to other people has been essential for our survival. And I, I, all I will say is, you do not need to posit some deity to explain the importance of this process, why it came about, and why it ultimately flourished. Uh, and within our, as you can see from now, this is this is a reason at its at, at its best. And you don't need a deity to explain it. You just need, yeah. Okay. Okay. There. Okay. Cheers. So, so Cheers. Yeah. Um, in terms of closing, all I want to say is that you've described the state of affairs in a way that a Darwinist would not, because Darwinism is not about group survival. It's about individual survival. And also, if we are not, for example, if we're not using our reason to hunt, now I have surplus reason. I'm going to use it for something else. That doesn't explain reason being used in that context because from a selective pressure point of view your constant focus is to increase your fitness nothing to do with let me have a chat with Faisal over whatsapp about the latest david belinsky thing or whatever it is right another thing to keep in mind is using this uh, a very a very rousseau type of perspective wouldn't help the Darwinian case because the Darwinists were fixated on refuting Rousseau to buttress Thomas Hobbes in the state of nature, okay? And the last thing is what Nagel pointed out, and thank you for reminding me about him, what Nagel pointed out and what uh, Beyond Evolution, who's the author? There's another book, uh, Anthony something, right? But anyway, so there's a few authors who, who've spoken about this, that our ability to use our reason beyond what is survive is good for our survival and our fitness enhancement that is something which cannot be explained from the darwinian paradigm anyway your closing remarks so yeah everything you say also trying to get at because what you're what you're saying is we use language to survive animals do just fine they should, we are talking not just about quantum mechanics we're not just talking about theoretical things about politics we're doing poetry we're doing all these things we should have got nothing to do with survival, right? It's a pure team. So that is, and, and also, when you're talking about God, you're posing another entity, actually, you're guilty of Occam's Razor. Because by you posing there's no God, you have to pose there is.
this is this gravity, this is such as nature, this is such as randomness. These are more entities that you have to explain than I have to with a god, right? So my my um, my theory, I think a few years a Muslim, would have a higher explanatory power as you want to call the Because I'm posing less entities than you are. But you're not you're not saying that. Let's come back when you read this stuff, yeah. I must respond to some point. You're saying that I so you're saying that God is gravity then. No, no. But then why are you saying that I'm Okay, gravity. well, but we, let me this finish it. Sure. I, by the way, I was not supporting um, uh, Rousseau. I was using his, uh, uh, him as an example uh, to explain that why we stick into why we stick in groups. No, but that's not I, that's anti-Darwinian. That's an anti-Darwinian perspective. I'm not necessarily supporting ever. As I said at the beginning, I'm not a biologist, but I do, have you have you ever but, had biryani? But of course I've had. Yeah. So what you've done is you've done a biryani. You've you've made a biryani. You've taken Darwinism. Which we were talking about, well, and no, you've taken the Rousseau no, no, state of nature, no, which is no, I, which is I on the opposite no, end. I didn't. I'm no, but, sorry, no, no, but okay, I okay. Did you do I, one I, thing? I let me let me just say I, one thing. I, used, did, I cited did, Rousseau. I said he uh, he believed in the noble savage, and then I said that but this state of being uh, is non-existent because we've always lived in groups as a species. So he was so Rousseau was talking about this world outside of society, and I'm I, I'm essentially saying this world is it would never actually. Really Really okay. Because we've always so so. This. What was the state? Say, when you said poetry, that this is actually very important to survival, entertaining one another within a, within a group, creating a stronger bond within. Okay. So one, so, uh, so, uh, so, within, so but but, but let, let's let's fi let, let, let's let's finish off this point. Uh -huh. This is all evolution. So you you keep important. talking about groups. Now yes. now I understood uh, what you're saying about Rousseau. What context you used him in? Darwinists do not start with groups. They start with individual level selection, uh -huh. and then what they what they what they focus on is reciprocal altruism, or kin, they, yes, or, which or, is or, or kin is. selection. Which okay, okay. Is, no, exactly no, no, no. It's, it's it's not to do with the groups. No, 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 no. It's not mutual altruism. Well, it's not. It's not. What it is is, I am going to be good to Faisal because he's going to give me something in the future. It's not altruism. What it is is it's a facade, it's a veneer of altruism, which is why, which is why David Stove, I know you've read Stove as well, right? He talks about this that Darwinism is a slander against human beings because it's basically yes. saying all of our moral virtues are basically a veneer under, underneath which they are selfish interests. So the argument that you're using and the the the, the picture that you're drawing it doesn't help your case. I, I just I will, I will say I say this about evolution the. The ideas of hi hi hi. You yeah. know that would yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, everyone knows we, that. We're this wrapping things up, but there was a sun uh, brutal attack at the end that I just have to clarify <laughs> now before I. No, leave. we'll talk next week. We'll um, talk next week. Yeah, let's let's wrap, to wrap let's wrap things sure, up. Sure. I, I'm going to go. But sure. I, I, it's good talking to you. The, but this the one last thing. Uh, you say that it's an, as an individual. Your evolution, uh, evolution does not explain uh, why I'm talking about groups. You're, 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 I know that it's not from the perspective of group collaboration. Darwin is talking about natural selection, but I'm saying that as an individual, your the likelihood of your survival is increased dramatically within a group. So you, so as a being, you have a, it's natural. You have a natural propensity to to um to guess it. But that's not altruism. That's selfishness. Saying, no, but I, I know it's yeah. it's selfish. It's 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 self. But I I don't. Interest. No, but do you do you believe? Okay, can, can I ask interest? you something? Yes. Faisal, me, you, all of us, right? We believe in altruism in a non-Darwinian sense. Yeah. We all do. And that altruism cannot be explained by Darwinism. Darwinism says altruism does exist. It's an illusion. We're well, just doing it for reciprocal reasons yep, or yep. kin selection. Alton is a veneer that we use in society to make something better. But in reality, it doesn't exist. You have yep. to accept that. It's an illusion. I, 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 I fully accept. Can I give you what you're calling? We don't need, need, to, we yeah. don't need uh, to. But I don't see how you can infer a deity from this. How do you explain an How do you explain an issue? How do you explain an issue? Look at human behavior. How do you explain an issue? The survival of the unfittest. Our tax money. So much of human behavior that we see all across the world in history and modernity. modernity. It's inexplicable. You're saying it's all a lie. It's all a big facade. It's a big circus. Not, yeah. That's what you're saying. No, no, what you're saying. It's all a big no. social game. No, saying. I'm. I'm not necessarily. I think you can be genuinely altruistic How? with your action. How? But no, but not from a Darwinian perspective. Not. 
Why would I, I give I you could... something? You're, you're my competitor. We're competing for resources. You just say, you just for women. say to We're charity for... in the NHS. You and me are competing for women. We're competing for resources. We're competing so... for uh, social class. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you're competing for jobs. You're my competitor in every aspect. Are... I'm not related but to you. you... It's a war of all against all. against all. Let's be real. You know, talking about hard man down this and stuff. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Berlin. No, stove. Stove. Sure. Um, let me tell you some quote, but I'm going to give you some stuff to read, and we'll have this discussion again because it's a bit unfair that we well, no, like no, we, bo no. we both. I, 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 I don't know. I don't. I don't think. Um, I don't think you've really addressed my key um, contention. I, I am ultimately saying that these ideas can be explained through the evolutionary an evolutionary um, scaffold. And you're saying we must positive okay, so, so, deity. So because and because, I, because we okay because we spoke, spoke for a long time, a long time because we Let's spoke go, for I, I'm I, just going to ask you one yeah, question I, and then you, we, we can I'm, end it. I'm going to go if, off, yes. Altruism, the way that we understand it, which is not to get something in back, not due to your not not to kin selection or reciprocal altruism. True altruism can it be explained by Darwinism? Well, as a, I'm not a biologist. I'm not a biologist. I'm not a Yes, but, I, exist. Yeah. I, but I, do, I, do, I think I don't think I think there are cases where you are motivated out of a of a love, perhaps for your fellow man. That's or, not Darwinian or, at all. Or, or, that's or, not Darwinian or, or, at all. Or, or, that's so, not Darwinism. Which ought to strengthen the, that's, the, that's, the that's, bonds within that's a group. That's not Darwinism. You you can be pro, you can be motivated to promote the interests of your group. But he said, oh, no, it's individual. Which, which we have a natural propensity to follow. And and be okay, part of right. because it's going to help you. No, no, no because no, it's going to no. help you if you help the group. Uh, yes. Yeah, but I, that wasn't my question. That. My question was true altruism. Yeah. I'm saying for something you don't get back. Yes, and I'm saying for the group, like okay. ants, this ants die for the, so, the queen. Okay, ant. okay, you know, okay. There, okay. Are, there are plenty of people. Say there's a say, say there's a the Sebu, right? Uh, no, Strabo. 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 You run. There's a house on fire. There's a child, you save the child, you come out and die, yes, so right? Okay. That's non-Darwinian behavior. Well, not necessarily, because ultimately I, I want I, I want to help the group. I want right. to help my fellow man, right. no because it's in my interest. Uh, oh. That's not Darwinism. That's not Darwinism. To help the group, no, I'm a natural you're, 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 no, 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 towards supporting no, you're, my, you're, you're, my, the group. Your highest rationale is to survive. In yes. Reduce, yes. To flourish. Everything else <laughs> is secondary. Yes. So no, do not mix no, them up. Well, it's, it's a war of, of yeah, as Stove says, yes, it's a war indeed. between you and the postman. Indeed. It's a war. <laughs> if it was a war, it would actually it would diminish my survive, my opportunity to survive. Maybe it would diminish if no, but what he's saying has been accepted in the literature, right? So, main core, hard core evolution biologists have said, and also doesn't exist, like they explain away if kids are selection or reciprocal, but altruism, an argument, right? That doesn't exist, it's also it doesn't, doesn't exist. Social game. I'm trying to look more free than I am. I'm gonna send you some stuff to read. Let, let me just okay, give you a quote yeah. about what we said earlier about Slan and human beings, sure, sure. By Dave Belinsky, right? Sure. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, so it's I'll, really good speaking come, to you. I'll come back next let, week. Let me I'm not here next week, the week after. Okay, right. Let me give you a quick. Oh, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I need to write his name down. It's such a difficult name. Strabble. What is it? Strabble. Strabble. What does it mean? You had a very. Uh, you asked him that like twenty times. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, man. Yeah. I know. Greek name. Strabble. Can, can, can you give a quote yeah, yeah. about what he said early on. Is a good quote about Darwin. Darwin is the house of slander of human being, right? This is Dave Belinsky, by the way. He goes, human beings are just a continuation of the animal kingdom, cousin akin to everything with forces that lives. Hard to distinguish from a great ape, except for the acquisition of a few skills of no particular significance. So like language, and like being able to do this, and no rocket, that's what you believe in. particular significance. These have immense significance. Okay, so that is, so that, so that's you're, you, that's should, you, you should join our camp. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Human exceptionalism. We are special then. Yeah. People are special not. We, we should be the same. God made us special. Yeah, of always say, no, no, no. We're just another animal. We're like yes. the grass over there. But fish evolved into the ape, ape into both. We're now like a sloth. You think about cosmology, and those are really important. That's what you're saying. It's all just. I'm saying that we have a far higher degree of Amen. consciousness. Which is good. Yeah, yeah. Still, it's not an animal. But, but it's not it's point. An the high, the abstract thinking is not point, right? All this quantum mechanics is not point. There are other, there are other have you got a pen? species of hominid that were also rash. Mahmoud, do you have a pen? Where they buried their dead. Do you have a pen? You can see they weren't humans, but they were rational. You got a pen? But lived alongside mm -hmm. humans. I'm going to write something we, down. Uh, you know, we I agree with what you're saying. Huh? Uh, Dawood always has a pen. 
It's I about three it. things. It's survival, flourish, and reproduction. Strabo. And, 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 and like he said, Darwinism has some principles. It's a universal um, a philosophy. And it's, like he said, it's individualistic, right? You cannot pick and choose when Darwinism applies and when it goes this. You know what they call you? They call you a soft man Darwinist. Because what you're saying is, life used to be this disgusting struggle for survival. They only, Everyone used to be they, this. only soft. Now, because of, only... now because of material abundance, we've been able to overcome this now and we've become civilized. And we're able to talk about poetry and have tea because those days are in the past. That's, you're not consistent. Look, here's the book Darwinian Fairy Tales by David Stove. Okay, you read that, okay. we'll have a chat. Okay, you see that Where's he's that not a soft man. man. Uh, you said he's a soft man. You got hard man, soft man, and then you got a view which doesn't fit. His view doesn't fit because he's Let's trying to defend true altruism. Yeah. Let's see about that next.